Hey everyone, I'll be making a video series on studying the book by Michael Hampton. The book is called Figure Drawing, Design and Invention. Now I understand that the most recommended or the most popular books on figure drawing are by Andrew Loomis or Bridgman. But uh, recently a friend of mine suggested that I take a look at this book because I was trying to learn and I was a little scattered here and there and not finding one source of information and uh, yeah he suggested Hampton and I've been st studying Hampton a little bit maybe for a month and I find it very useful so I thought I should probably document the process of studying and uh, yeah so that's what this video is going to be it's going to be me going through all the topics in the book and you'll see me draw along with it but by no means is this is this video a replacement for you need to buy the book if you want to study the book you will need to buy this and this video is not going to replace if it's not an it's not a tutorial it's just the book in a nutshell and me practicing alongside it so yeah let's get started so hampton starts off with explaining how to go about the gesture and it's it's very important that when you start drawing the gesture or start understanding how to do it you need to be aware of the eight parts of the body he divides it into eight parts which we start with the head and then you see how the spine runs down and then you move on to the rib cage followed by the pelvis and then you go into the legs and then draw the arms so once you're aware of these eight parts you know how to read a pose when you are drawing from life you know what are the different things that you need to pay attention to so basically it's broken down into eight parts and uh, in drawing the gesture, you communicate a sense of story. And one thing that's very important to notice is that every person, every individual has a way of holding them. So a way of maintaining their posture. You know, different people have different ways of holding it. So once you know how these eight parts are sort of in a rhythm, you also know what is the story that you can communicate with the lines and you know you can just draw things that indicate it's the way the person is holding their body and by drawing these over time you develop a sense of proportion and you develop the figures how the figure balances and how the weight is spread across Also, another important thing to understand while drawing gestures is that when you communicate a person's body language through lines, it's important to pay attention to repeating lines and the asymmetry in them. So you see, in showing a sense of flow in certain part of the body, you might be using repetitive lines. The same by asymmetry, you can show how the rhythm is spreading in the rest of the body. once you understand the lines that convey the gesture and then you can move on to the form and uh, here so when i draw this basic cylindrical shape here i indicate it in space by these wrapping lines which show that the cylinder is tilting in a certain perspective so you see that uh, without actually drawing the cylinder and just drawing the wrapping lines you understand how it's placed in space so that's what so that, that is why wrapping lines are quite important to draw to do on a figure so let me just draw a human figure so once you get the basic shape there here i'm drawing the head and once you sort of represent the body you can to show how it behaves in space you can use wrapping lines so wrapping lines it's, it shows it's if, if the form is either receding or coming towards the viewer. And uh, yeah, this basically shows the movement in space. So once I, so let's look at this now. I'm drawing the legs here. And once the thighs and legs are drawn, I can differentiate between the two legs because one is clearly forward and the other is 
back it's going away from the viewer so this can be shown using wrapping lines as you can see here another useful tip in trying to get the wrapping lines is that thinking of them as rubber bands or how strings if if like when you take the legs let's say there are strings wrapped around it so how would that look so this is a mental exercise that uh, that is given in the book and which is quite useful because when I was drawing forms on other figures uh, maybe intuitively you can't tell if it's receding or going away because sometimes it can be complex so imagine there is you're, you're wrapping a string around this particular form so that gives an indication of will it protrude out or will it recede back of the eight parts of the body that we mentioned it's uh, it's basically a relationship between all these parts and uh, to begin constructing that relationship it's very important that you understand how the spine behaves or what does the flow of the spine and then the movement of the spine in relationship with the other seven elements and this is a key thing that you will need to practice just look at a figure keep drawing the movement of the spine it might not be a finished sketch it will be just the spine let, let's imagine the spine is liquid and it's flowing so how would it flow so that would be a an exercise that you need to keep repeating to understand and once you become more intuitive with the lines and curves you'll see that there's a concrete relationship initially it can be tough uh, so yeah keep when you keep practicing that you'll see how they all behave in sync with each other so the spine is basically primarily an s curve and when trying to draw this s curve the complexity arises when you need to think of it dimensionally from different perspectives the s looks different because some a certain the first curve might be receding the other curve might be going away or coming towards so in drawing this s curve you need to communicate the cervical thoracic and the lumbar regions of the spine and that 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 could be difficult in the beginning as you can see uh, it's not a very simple task but yeah with practice you tend to get it and you can and it helps to break it down into boxes or uh, multiple cylinders that are forming this s curve so once you do that and you get the s curve it really helps in the overall quality of the gesture and one thing I have to really understand is how the spine moves. The rest, everything else is a consequence of it. Everything else, the arms, the pelvis, the ribcage, the rhythm in all of those elements are a consequence of how the spine is moving. So it's very important that you practice a lot of spines in different angles and get it right. So once you're uh, comfortable with translating the major masses or the eight parts in their relationship with each other then you move on to understand what movement in the body is and as beginners something that all of us tend to you know the main the very common mistake is that all our figures tend to look very static it looks very it looks very rigid in space so to understand how to communicate that movement it's it's very essential to understand what center of gravity is and once you un, once you get a command over manipulating center of gravity you are in a position to exaggerate these figures and make it more animated so in order to achieve this quality of a dynamic pose hampton calls it calls a certain pose and about to pose and about to pose is which let's imagine the 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 figure or the model is going to do something and just before it reaches that static you know from one static pose to the other static in between there is flow you know how the body moves so you always imagine they are they've not reached their final pose so in order to reach that final pose where would they be and so when you understand this you understand how and at what point the body is balanced at so to understand this when you connect the belly to 
both the foot you see a triangle forming and this triangle sort of indicates what the balance is is the pose or the model steady are they balanced or are they about to fall so when you can exaggerate this triangle you also exaggerate the movement and becomes more dynamic So after having gone through these lessons that I've mentioned, I try to incorporate it into my figure drawings and understanding how to tell a story with the tips that Hampton has given. And you'll see that some of my poses are good somewhere where I get stuck in depicting how the body is moving. I try using the wrapping lines. So, and I also, one thing that I've recently started doing is that I avoid pencils because I've seen myself where I get fixated, get fixated on correcting the drawings and achieving a lot of, you know, uh, accuracy. Where in fact, learning gesture is basically about trying to get the rhythm and uh, pens. Using pens help me do that because there is not not a lot of correction that goes into it i if i get it wrong i try again so that increases in the quality of quantity of how many drawings i do what's really key in getting better at figure drawing or gestural drawings is is the sheer quantity of work you can produce during your practice sessions so with all the topics that I just covered, I think practicing on each front, you know, practicing the wrapping lines, practicing the balance and the form. So all of that individually and to produce a lot of work is what will, you know, finally show up in your figure drawings, sketches, paintings. Yeah, so in the and in the next video, we're going to be looking at topics like landmarks, getting into the details of the pelvis, the ribcage. Further, we'll go on and see how the head has been constructed. Thank you.